Ahó. Oh, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. about to get into the um the next part of this uh particular lecture. So just hold on for a moment, grab your pen and your paper and your sacred scripture and get ready to receive some of the most dynamic truths ever to reach these shores since our ancestors the once lost but now found Beta Israel was sold into slavery circa fifteen thirty AD. Public words of our Godfather, Adamawi Haila Selassie. And now this is the 17th. This is the 17th uh, uh, Torah portion reading and feeding. <coughs> that's um, <coughs> that's known as Yotor or Jethro, and it commences with Exodus chapter 18 verse 1 now we've touched briefly on the first part of this particular Torah portion reading and feeding so we're going to recap and go a little bit deeper we wanted to present some um, visual um, some visual art and facts to, to help to supplement um, this Torah portion reading and feeding we're going to touch on Moses when Moses was judging the people and the advice that his father-in-law, Yotor or Jethro, the Medeanite, the Ethiopian, Jethro gave to him and some very crucial and very important um, organization, organization um, building the foundation of the Beta Israel nation. And in this present time, we ourselves would would do well if we would recall this wisdom of one of our major patriarchs, the black man Moses out of Egypt, the one who was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts, speaking of Upper and Lower Egypt, speaking of Tobia, the ancient Ethiopia. This is the connection now of our Ethiopian Hebrew identity and especially for us as the elect Rastafari in this present time and dispensation. So as we said already, grab your pen and your paper and your sacred scripture, the B-I-B-L-E, and get ready to receive some of the most amazing, the dynamic truths ever to reach these shores of the West, of, of the Amenta, of so-called America, since our ancestors, the once lost but now found Beta Israel, 
or sold into slavery. So stay tuned, brothers and sisters. We're going to go into this in just one moment, all right? Just hold on. Okay, brothers and sisters, let us let us uh let us get into this uh Torah portion reading and feeding. So we had Exodus chapter eighteen. Exodus chapter eighteen. Now I want to get some of our notes, um, some of the study materials that you should be familiar with and you should have downloaded already by now. Another point and of note to the Dekamas Amorta and the disciples, those brothers and sisters who have filled out the discipleship application and have sent it in. Um, most of the ones who have emails, we've sent out certain emails recently. Only a few responses so far to those particular emails. We have an a internet group, a, um, a email, a Yahoo group that we're using to send out some of the um, emails, the updates, as well as to discuss some of the particular discipleship matters and issues um, through that particular means. We're also experimenting and trying other means of this technology, using the technology more effectively in order to outreach with the brothers and sisters. So please stay tuned. Look forward to more on that. And we're going to list if not in this particular video and update in a future one, we hope to be able to list where this particular um this l o j s twenty twelve on the yahoo groups now one particular note since many of the brothers and sisters have already filled out the discipleship applications, it's those that we've responded to initially there's others who might watch these particular videos on the Ethiopian World Net, on the YouTube, so elsewhere on the Internet, or on DVDs, VCDs, so forth and so on. Um, and even through those particular means, ones can hopefully utilize our other um, Internet um, um, resources. And these are some of the resources that um, we hope that you've downloaded. Uh, um Senbetawi Samentawi uh Senbet or Rit the Nibab, the Torah portion readings and feedings, as well as the Rastafari Hebraic Judaic Year. These are some of the free materials and resources because as you probably already know, we are studying keeping the Sabbath holy and in that process we're studying our Torah portion readings and feedings because as much um, knowledge and information we have to get the knowledge of the Son of God of our Black Lord and Savior Shua HaMoshiach the glory of Kedamawi Haile Selassie our Godfather and King of Kings we we need that knowledge and information in other words before we can even get involved we first of all have to get informed and this is why we have Livicated ourselves to this particular process and seek to do our best to articulate, to explain, and also to answer particular questions that ones have that will enable them to be able to receive the truth and also to act on it. Now, this particular portion, known as Yotor, which is the 17th Torah portion reading and feeding, I think is one of the most crucial portions for us, especially when we speak about getting our Father's house, our Caduceus' house, in its proper order. And and according to what is written, this, this is the key, as His Majesty says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. And may all of us be able to say, for I and I part, we glory in the Bible, and to be able to show and to prove that in real time. So now, with that being said, we're going to get into this portion. This is the 17th. This is the 17th um, portion, so you should be on page, um, on the appropriate uh, page, page 7, page, uh, let's see, this, page, uh, 
page numbers here, page one, two, three, four, page five. Page five of this Torah portion, reading and feeding. So here's where we're at right now. For those on page five, we're right here, Yotor, Yotor. So we're going to recap briefly. And in our recapping, we utilize this particular book right here, which is a compilation of um, certain Wikipedia um, Torah portion, Parsha, readings and feedings. And this is a compilation. This is a compilation of this month's or the book of Exodus. You can say the Hebrew book of Exodus, so the Torah portion, readings and feedings in the book that is known as Shemot, the Hebrew book of Exodus. So now in this particular reading and feeding, in this particular reading and feeding, this will be the fifth the fifth, there's about 11, I think there, there are 11 um, portions in the book of Shemot or the book of Exodus. So we're at the fifth one in the book of Exodus. But in the year, in our cycle, according to our proper calculation of time and timekeeping, this is the 17th since the Simchat Torah or the joy of Jah's law or the the joy of, of Torah, Simchat Torah, Sisha Orit, in Bamarinya, the Sisha Orit. And that begins the cycle. So here at Yotor, Jethro, let's, let's tag this up on the dry erase board. And first of all, it's the RSS number 17. So put this here, the RSS number 17. So we have RSS number 17. Bamarinya in the Amharic is known as Yo To Re Yotor Yotor or Y-O-T-O-R Now in the English that is just Row, Jeff Row. Now we'll get into the. Some say it means excellency. Some say this name means excellency. We had noted before that this particular, this is a key sign right here. This particular letter is the is the T, but it's the seventh order, the the sub order, and it's the O. At U E I A at O. We want to go also into a teaching of the Fidels, teaching at least what we call our personal system of, of the Fidels. Now we have um, um, an update on the Amharic Bible, uh, the, the Amharic Bible homeschooling. We, we have an update of that as well. Let's see if we have that book. We want to show this to you. Show you this particular particular. There's a you know there's much work right here. Um, that particular book, whether you might have given a given a copy of that away, but there's probably another copy in the files. Anyway, it's very important for us to learn the language, to learn our language. Language is the key, is the key of communication between man and man. It's the key of our culture. Say it our Godfather, the King of Kings, Ketamawi, Haila Selassie. So this is the 17th portion. Like we said, we'll get into um, some of the teaching of the language, we'll try to devote some videos to the actual teaching and further dissemination of our language. But here we want to touch on and continue with Exodus chapter, we're in chapter, we're in chapter 18 still, and we had left off, where we left off, we left off roughly around verse, um, 
verse uh, 12, verse 12, verse 13, where it says, And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrifices for God, for Elohim, and Aaron came, and all the elders of Israel, to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. So Moses' father-in-law, the Ethiopian, the Medianite, you see, he was an Ethiopian by his race or his his greater nationality by his uh, descendancy, but of the particular province that he or tribe that he was of, he was a Medianite. This is one of the reasons why in different areas of the scripture, he and his daughter, um, Sipara or Zipporah, is, are referred to as Medianites as well as, as Ethiopian. So here is the Ethiopian Hebrew connection. The connection with Yotor or Jethro is the Ethiop is the root, one of the roots, just one of the roots, because if we go to Genesis, go back to Genesis, we recognize that Abraham's third wife was Keturah, and she bore six sons for our father or patriarch Abraham, and one of those was Median. Another one was Saba or Sheba. So that's the roots of their family. This is the key thing to understand. The Medianites and the Beit Israel or the Israelites are family. So there's this Ethiopian Hebrew connection that we find in the scripture even even before Moses and his Ethiopian wife, because Moses' Ethiopian wife is called a Medianite. The father here, who this portion is named after, Yotor, he is known as a Medianite. He's a priest of the Medianite. In fact, he was the one who initiated Moses into the other order of the wisdom of the Egypts. Because Moses already was an initiate and well acquainted with lower, so-called lower Egypt, popular quote Egypt, but upper Egypt now, speaking of Tobia or Ethiopia, he was initiated through his, his father-in-law, Yotor. So now here we have in verse, in verse 12 that Jethro, Yotor, he sat, he broke bread, he burnt offerings and sacrifices for Elohim. He blesses Elohim. And this is the first place you find Elohim being blessed besides with Moses. But the, but, but the blessing that he makes is to reproach Yisrael because nowhere do we have any witness of any Israelite blessing Yahweh for all that had been done and they experienced it. They 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 were in the eye of the storm. Yoto was not in the eye of the storm. He was taking care of his daughter and his grandchildren, Moses' children. And he brought Moses' wife, Sipara, and his two sons, Ger Sam and Al Azar or Gershom and Eleazar to him. Now, at this particular point, he's reasoning with the elders of Israel. Now, it's often been said that the elders of Israel were 70, were 70 in numbers. This is going to, going to be very, very significant, the, the, the numbers here, because the connection well, well, we'll bring forward this connection with the number 70. So, the elders were thought to be of the number 70. Now, 70 is said to have, uh, have a particular um, spiritual, heavenly, as above, so below value. But, but he's breaking bread with the elders of Israel. Verse 13, and it came to pass on the morrow, so it came to pass on the next day, that Musa, that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood by Musa, Moses. And as we mentioned before, Musa in the Ethiopic 
it is a title, Muse. A Muse is a head of a fraternal order, according to the Ethiopic. So when one say that, well, Moses this and Moses that, what they fail to recognize is the Ethiopic truth and the Ethiopic testimony that the the word sound Muse refers to a title of a, a head of a fraternal order. It's the title of that for the head of a particular fraternal order. So here we have Moses. It says, sat to judge the people, and the people stood by Moses from morning to the evening. And this is 18 and 13, Exodus 18 and 13. So, brothers and, and sisters, um, take note of this right here. Here's where we're going to begin. Exodus 18 and 13. Now, it, it tells us that Moses, what did he do? He sat. That it says that Moses sat, right, to judge, all right? He sat. Moses sat to judge. Now, Moses, the head of the fraternal order of the Lewawian or the Levites, who will become, as we go forward, they will become the priests of the Beta Israel. They will be the priests. They will be entrusted with the priestical function. Now now note, Yotor Jethro is a high priest of the Medianites of that particular tribe of the Ethiopian Hebrews. They're not just Ethiopians, but they are Hebrews because their ancestor is our ancestor, is Abraham. Just just to note this because some might need to document. Let's just document this for you. And when we go to um, Genesis, let's go to Genesis, and let's go to after Sarah, after Sarah had died, after Sarah had, had died, there's a very interesting note right here in... Um, in uh, the Bible in the book of uh, in the book of uh, Gen Genesis, it says right here the, the death and the burial of of Sarah. It says, um, and it came to pass, the angel of the Lord uh, Jehovah Jireh. Sarah was 100 years, okay, here we go right here, um, verse, uh, chapter 24, go to chapter 24, right, chapter, uh, chapter 24, well, actually, you could, uh, chapter 25, it's in chapter 25, so a lot of interest, there's always, always a lot of interesting things here, but this is just a proof that um, the Medeanites were Hebrews. They weren't just, just they were Afro-Shemitic. They were Afro-Shemitic. Here in Genesis chapter 25, from verse 1, it says, Then again Abraham took a wife. So now remember, there was Sarah. Then there was Hagar, from Hagar come Ishmael, Sarah bears Yishak, Sarah dies, Abraham marries uh, of his son, um, Yishak to uh, uh, Ribka, to Rebecca, but we have that in chapter, actually, that's in chapter 24, a bride for Isaac. But when we get to chapter 25, it says that Abraham weds Keturah. It says, then again, Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah. Keturah, right? And she bare him Zimran, and Jokshan, and Madan, and Median, and Ishbak, and Shua. Shua is, in, is, is very interesting because we have a province um, and a people in Ethiopia known as the Shoa. So we have Shua, and there must be a connection there as well. Verse 3 says, And Jokshan begat Sheba, 
and Dedan and the sons of Dedan were Asherim and Latushim and Luumim and the sons of Median, Epha and Epher and Hanok and Abida and Elda. All these were the children of Keturah. So all of these now we have with the children of Keturah. Now in verse 2 it says Median. So here we have Median. And that connection now with the Medianites is clear. In verse 3, we have Jokshan begatting Sheba. So once again, the queen of Sheba, yes, she's an Ethiopian, but what most neglect is that she was a Hebrew as well. So this Jethro or Yotar, not a Israelite, but a relative and of the same family and faith. This is the key. He was of the same family and faith, right? Okay, we wanted just to, to document that, you know, because a lot of guys and gals and people who don't really study, they say a lot of funny things and incorrect things and make people believe something that is not really true, you understand? And if they would take the time and, and seek it out of the Scripture and document it, you'll find out that, well, the... Medeanites and Jethro wasn't just an Ethiopian. Zipporah wasn't just an Ethiopian. They were Ethiopian Hebrews. So when we say today that we are Ethiopian Hebrews or black Jews, you understand, but more correctly, Beta Israel, or descriptively, Ethiopian Hebrews. This is nothing new. Some people say, oh, this is a new thing, a new doctrine, this is a new life. It ain't nothing new. People have not been studying and showing themselves approved. So they need to be disproved. And this is what we're doing here. So brothers and sisters, we're giving you that information right there. Make a note of it, you know, um, and study it and know the truth for yourself. But this verse right here. This, this particular verse right here in verse um, 13 where it says, And it came to pass on the morrow, the next day, that Musa, that Moses sat to judge the people. That he did what? He sat to judge the people. Now, this is very Egyptian. This, was, this is very Egyptian. See, we have to un understand, not just understand, but in the beginning, get a good standing, understand, but come to the overstanding or the full standing of what this means. Most people will just, just gloss past verse 13. They'll say, okay, Moses sat to judge. You know, there was something going on. But notice, he was judging from morning to evening, all day. You understand? But the, the key thing is that Moses sat to judge. Now, and I'm keep saying sat. Why is this word sat so significant? And we want to underline this. Sat. Why is sat so significant? And particularly sitting in connection with judgment. Do you know why, brothers and sisters? It's what we wanted to um, touch on from the, the first part of this 17th Torah portion, Scroll and Feeding. How many of you all have seen this? This is a book by Dr. Ben. You understand? By Dr. Ben. It's called Black Man of the Now and his family. And Dr. Ben is probably one of the one of the first of, of our people, of our kind, that has really made those connections. Now, we might disagree with some of his interpretation of certain matters, but as an historian and as a documentarian, he provides us a lot of very crucial and useful information. Now, if we Let's see if we mark the page. We want to mark the page to share this with you. Have you ever looked at the hieroglyphs, the hieroglyphic images? And in the hieroglyphic images, they usually will show you, and there's various different hieroglyphic images. Now, there's a bunch of talk about masonry, you know, about Freemasonry, New World Order, so forth and so on. But what most people don't have correct is the context. They don't have the context. And many of us as so-called black folks, you know, we get spooked off, you know, spooked out because we're not studying and showing ourselves approved. And remember it says that we have not been given a spirit of, of, of fear, 
You understand? But of love, you, you know, power and sound, uh, soundness of mind. Now, here on this particular page, let's see if we can show this. This is some of the 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 Masonic, so-called what's called Masonic symbology today. But these are some of the ancient tools, the ancient tools of the Ethiopic craft. Yes, it was an Ethiopic craft. You understand? Uh, Ethiopic, you could say trade, wisdom, school, of building, of architecture, of engineer, of science, of culture, and art. But all this came from its Ethiopic root. And Egypt was the show place. Egypt became the show place of this ancient Ethiopic technology and spirituality. Now, you see the various different symbols here. You have the plumb ball. You have the, the brick mold right here, the float. You have the square. And this is what we're talking about. You see this symbol, the square? Now, the square is very significant, as are some of the other symbols, whether it's the plumb bob here or the chisel here or the mallet here or the feather of truth to weigh and to, and to balance. And then we have the ankh that we pointed out as the toe. It has the sound of toe, as in yotor. is that central letter in the name of Moses' father-in-law's name, the sun solar, the pedal, or the solar disk. Got the car here. Have the lotus plant. Now, besides in the cartouche here, or the shem, besides these just being artistic, they had multiple meanings. You understand? Know to the native people in their context. Now, today a lot of these symbols are used, you understand, in its whitewashed perversion and its whitewashed version. So somewhat maybe truly related to, in some sense related, you understand, but there's a whitewash to a lot of the use of these symbols. And what a lot of us don't even recognize is that these symbols actually are our ancient symbols, and they wasn't just symbols, but they were tools. Now you see this right here? This is a square. Remember, we're talking about Exodus chapter 18 verse 13 where Moses sat now where did he sit he sat to do what he sat to judge now as we said we wanted to um, show this more as a word picture but since you know time is of the essence we said we'll just record this and get into as much as as we can um, and the the the, the Judgment scene in the Purt M Kharu, the judgment scene where old Sar, you know, um, is judging. You know that scene, that famous scene where old Sar is judging. I want to find it, see if there's a picture of it that is in here, and then mark a page. But you probably are well familiar with the particular image that I'm speaking of, where old Sar is judging, and Anubis is is, is similar to this particular, similar to this particular scene right here. This is like Moses judging. He sat. But now where did he sit? Where did he sit? He sat on the square. He sat on the square. You understand? And here in Dr. Ben's book, he says something interesting on page 283 that we'd like to share with you. But let us just demonstrate this right here. He sat, right? He, he sat. He sat on the on the square. This is a rough, a rough image of the square. He sat on the square. Now, when you look at some of the ancient Egyptian, um, the thrones. You see that the thrones have a very unique shape. In fact, the shape of the thrones are something to the effect of, let's see if we can artistically render this. And then you have an inner one right here. Then you have the, this and then this part coming down the back part 
of the seat right here. Something to this this basic um, effect, and then you can color this right here. And this is this is that 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 square. This is this is the square. You know what I'm saying? This is the judgment seat that's known as as the ma'at. Now ma'at has a signification also in the Ethiopic that is quite interesting. Some call this the Masonic squares, only because there's so much talk among the Europeans and others of masonry, masonry, masonry. But we call this the mysteries. We call this wisdom. You understand? We call this this was Ethiopic civilization, you know, although they use this word, my son, Mason, a lot today. This was all part and parcel of Ethiopic civilization, and we're tracing it. We're documenting it. Here we have Jethro, Moses' father-in-law. He's a Median knight, but yet we find that the Median knights are a tribe of the Ethiopians, and he's a Hebrew, too, because of that connection that we find with Abraham's third wife, and she had a son named Median. On one hand, another son named she grandson named Sheba. So we have Saba, Sheba. So we have a, what we call we call this Afro, right? This is Afro Shemitic, right? This is Afro Shemitic. Not just the language, but the people. We call ourselves Ethiopian. Hebrews or describe ourselves as Ethiopian Hebrews, not a new thing, a biblical thing, a qualification, an identity, very specific. Now, this ma'at here, or some might call it the um, ma'ati, you understand? Ma'at, ma'ati, ma'ati, ma'at, right? The Masonic squares. Now, what does Dr. Ben say right here? Dr. Ben says that and, and, and there's, a, there's a back story. When, when we say there's a back story to this, that's very important as well. There's, there's, there's a back story to this as well. But we're just going to go from Ptah was the builder who wrought in conjunction with Ma or Mati. Mati was considered to be the, quote, goddess or the principle, the attributes, should we say, of law, justice, truth, etc., and we mentioned this to show that Ma, the Ma or Mati, was also founded on the Masonic, what's known as the Masonic square. So when Exodus 18 and 13 says Moses sat to judge, he sat upon this square. He was a judge, but this is what a lot of folks don't know, is that Moses just, just wasn't a judge but he was a king, too. See, not only was Moses a judge, but he was a king. Now, we will document that as well. In fact, if you go to Deuteronomy chapter 33, it basically explains that Moses was king in Jeshuru, Jeshurun, in Jeshurun. Now, was Jeshurun a place? But then it speaks about the God of Jeshurun. The key connection, once again, is Egypt. It's the key connection. This is why we want to show some of the images, um, the art and facts. But first, we'll deal with this as a teaching. So hopefully we can get some of the logistics. You know what I'm saying? Get some of the logistics, the word, the logic. So this is the simple square or right angle. You understand? Which means righteousness, which symbolizes righteousness to have it square, you know, and those who've been studying the whole Masonic rah-rah probably have heard some of those basic principles. But where it gets twisted is the difference between Freemasonry and Masonry. See, in ancient Egypt, this was not so-called Freemasonry. This was basically wisdom, science, life, building. You understand? It was part of the civilization. You see, it was, if you want to call it masonry, working in stone, well, it was working in stone. When the same uh, tools and sciences was used for agriculture and to grow food, it was known as agriculture. You understand? When it was used to build ships, 
you understand, and build and build other sort of vessels and do other things. It was just science and technology. So what we're looking at is the ancient Ethiopic Hebrew science and technology. And what we're discovering as we study the scripture is that there are powerful hints and keys there. Right here where it's speaking about how Moses, he sat. There's a tradition even in Ethiopia that the judges usually in this, in this dispensation stand. But in that particular dispensation, according to the culture of the time, it's like America, it's like Western culture, people around the world, in order to be considered to be so-called civilized, they do it the so-called American or Western way. The same was true even in these ancient times. But much of that is lost because it's the racist, the, the white supremacist, the white washer, you understand, who has mistranslated these things, either knowingly or unknowingly. Now it's up to us, you understand, to study and to show ourselves approved, you understand, to get informed and then to get involved. So here, speaking of Pata and Ma'ati and Ma Ma'ati, um, Dr. Ben goes on and says, we have no doubt that I was saying to act on the square, you probably heard that, to act on the square Masonically is from the Egyptian. He starts it basically at the Egyptian. We take it a little bit further in our teaching. We say it goes back to the Ethiopic. It goes back to the Tob, the Tob land, which to the Egyptians they call it the Kui land. The God land, the good land, in Hebrew, Tob means good. And Tobaya or Tobaija, Tobia is the archaic name of Ethiopia. But in the Hebrew, Tobaya or Tobaija, it means the good I am, the good Ja, which is very interesting because when I looked at it, some say it means the good of Ja. That can, that can be interpreted in that sense. But in a more direct sense, it's saying the good Yah, the good I am that I am. Because not everyone who can self-identify themselves is truly in the good. Remember the other, you understand, who basically caused this rift from the very beginning, because he would not bow to the God-man, just like they did not want to bow to the king of kings. They did not want to bow to earth's rightful ruler, just like Pharaoh, or that evil Pharaoh did not want to bow to the real ear, to Brother Mashu or Musa, Moses. The same is basically true. And it goes on. Now, to act rightly or to act justly and truthfully or according to ma'at. Now, ma'at. As we say, there's, there's an Ethiopic fact. For example, ma'at is interesting in, in Ethiopic. Since we touched on it, we'll just go into this right here. Ma'at. What does um, ma'at? You understand? We have... Ma'at. 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 We have ma'at. Ma'at. It's, it's very interesting what ma'at um, means because ma'at, it, it has a meaning of the the judgment of God, um, a, a great cataclysmic judgment of God. In fact, what we want to do is get the is get this dictionary and show you. It's, it's better that we it's better that we um, it's better that we show show you. We didn't know we were gonna get on this particular point, but since we're here, we want to we want to show you this. So hold on.
All right, you see this dictionary right here? This is kind of an old, it's kind of an old dictionary. You can see it's kind of worn that down. It's lost its covers, but this is a, I call it Ethiopian for Ethiopian's dictionary because it's basically, it's not like Amharic to English, English to Amharic. It's basically Amharic to English. So you would have to have a basic level uh, mastery of the Fidels in order to be able to, um, you know, surf the book and and look for what you find, what you find, what you're looking for. But let's get the word um, ma'at. You understand? Let's get the word uh, ma'at right here. Let's see if we can find this word ma'at right here because. I was very, it was very interesting coming across Ma'at. Okay, they actually, we have it like it's in the Met of Caduce. They spell it a little bit, a little bit differently. Here it's spelled a little bit differently. And here they basically spell it, they, they spell it Me. They use this A, Ma'at. Me'at. We use me'at. Me'at. We use me'at. Me'at. And here, let's see if we can show you right here. This is it right here. This is the word right here. Perhaps you can see this. Maybe you can get a, a, a still of this. I don't know how clear it is. Right? And the meaning is it says, first meaning they have here is horror, horror, like a horror, semicolon. But then it says, wrath of God. It says, wrath of God. Then, semicolon, it says, huge number, in parentheses, for crowd of people, comma, calamity. So it says, horror, a wrath of God, a huge number. So the word depends on the context. It depends on the context. The idea is is something awesome. It's, it's something is something amazing. Something awesome, but it can mean a horror. But at its key, it means the wrath of God. But in the sense of the judgment, the judgment of God. You understand the judgment of God. Then it also means a huge number. A huge number. If you say that something is ma'atenya, it just say something is shocking or horrifying. Now, this is interesting that this sort of meaning for ma'at has been preserved in here in the Amharic, and there's a good reason for that. But when we get into the text of the scriptures, we'll actually will come across actual actual usages of it in certain well-known um, translations, but in the original, it will use that word. When we come across, when we come across that, I'll definitely, y'all willing, um, remind you and let you, and let you know about that. We just want to touch on this right here and make this connection. Let's touch on Moses sat to judge. What does Moses sitting to judge? As we said, Moses was king. Moses was king in Jeshurun. Moses was a king in Jeshurun. He ruled as a king and as a judge because really he was the rightful heir to the throne of Egypt. Not his, not his um, you could say, um, stepbrother, you understand, Tehuti Muse or Tutmosis, but Moses being adopted by Hatshepsut or Pharaoh's daughter before Thutmose the third was born. You see, but the whole incident of the murder of the Egyptian and his fleeing into the wilderness, so forth and so on. So when we understand those nuances to the story, it begins to make sense, the record that we have here. So people reading the Bible say, oh, it doesn't really make sense because you're not able to make sense of it. Because when the people wrote it, they wasn't writing it for ignoramuses. Nowadays, they were writing it for the people who knew or the people who would take the, the time and patience to seek the truth. 
You understand? So the way it's written there, it was written, it was understood by those in the time in which it was written and which it's received and by us who study to show ourselves approved. So these, these little areas like verse 13 of chapter 18 where Moses sat to judge, and now we begin to see this, this throne right here. We begin to see that Moses, we can say, he sat to judge. Moses acted on the square. Or Moses, he acted masonically. He acted rightly. He acted justly. He acted truthfully according to the wisdom of Egypt, ma'at, according to justice, based on pata, the sitte. Fitte Bamarinya, as we touched on before, Fitte Bamarinya is the Egyptic or Egyptian Pata. So we take the name Pata and we put it in its Ethiopic root context. We have Fitte, Fitte or Fitha, which basically means the justice, like Fitha Negest, Fitha Negest, the justice of kings. So we have the connection with Fitta, you understand, or Pata. In fact, let's let us uh put this, you know, let us put this here as well. We have to judge, right? To judge. So we have we have Pata, right? But Bamarinya, we have Fitta. You understand? Or Fet Fetha. Fata and fitte, 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 which basically means justice, righteousness in Ethiopic. Once again, proving that the true roots of both the Bible, you understand, and even ancient Egypt is found in Tobia or ancient Ethiopia. You understand? And it's the language that really is that precious gem for us. And in the language is embedded, you understand, in the, in the Ethiopic language, in the royal Amharic language, it is embedded those gems, those pearls of what we are looking for. You understand? Because the names are the matrix that enclose that which we are searching for, that which we are mining for. Keep that in mind as we've reminded about this previously as well, but working with ma or ma'at. Remember what the meaning, ma'at, horror, it said wrath of God, uh, a large number, like a large number of people. So we're going to find out in the next verse that Moses, not only was he sitting as a king to judge in the order of siti, pita, Fetheh, as the Fetheh Negesht, you understand? He was sitting to judge, acting rightly on the square, but there was a ma'at. There was a what? There was a large crowd of people. In addition, there was a large crowd of people. So the is the seat of Osiris. Or Yishrun, Yishrun, whom in your Bibles is Jeshurun. You have Jeshurun in your Bibles, but I tell you that that is the Hebraic Osar, the Hebraic Osiris. And Moses now is fulfilling this in real time because of his learning and preparation in the mystery. But his Ethiopian father-in-law is going to give him something very key because Moses is still, you have to remember, Moses was initiated, he's mighty in word and deed. But we, we have it throughout, Moses needs to be advised in some ways. His wife, Sipara, when he forgot to circumcise the son and Yahweh says wanted to kill him, it was his wife, Sipara, that understood what it was that Moses had not done. You see, he was doing the right thing, but it's not a, a sin. Uh, is not just what we do, but it can also be what we don't do. 
you know, so some people say, I haven't done this, I haven't done that. But it's not just what you do, but it's also what is left undone. But here, Moses is doing the right thing to judge the people and bring justice to the people. But there is something wrong with the order and the arrangement. In fact, when we look at this, it's almost as though Moses was still recalling what he had seen in the Egyptian mysteries, in the wisdom, even that judgment scene where you see Osiris, Osar, sitting on the throne and Anubis weighing the hearts against the feather, you understand, and, and, and Her-Ur coming with Ani, bringing them ones to, to, to be, each one to be judged, to weigh and balance each one's case. You understand? But what he forgot about was the assessors. And this is what, what Jethro is going to show him as we go forward. And this is the key for even us with our discipleship and with getting our father's house in order and preparing for the millennial age, the kingdom age of the king of kings and his Christ. This is the key. So the, the square... You know what I'm saying? This square, the square is the seat of Jeshurun. Who is Jeshurun? You know what I'm saying? Is the, is the seat of Jeshurun. 